let's go ahead and go on crude oil. And crude oil, if you notice this morning, um, our two main charts are market profile to the far left. This actually tells you the actual order flow coming into the market. Remember, these are electronically traded markets. So what this measures is it measures the total order flow from all the algorithms, hedge funds, prop firms, amateur professional traders, and it spits out support and resistance for us as the market's volume comes in the market, as the volume is created. So you can see right here a great little trade that we have is a break retest of low value area. It's a very, very dynamic trade because you broke outside a low value area and if you're in a downtrend, which we are in crude, a simple ABC pattern that we do is a break retest of the control of the um, low value area, I'm sorry, of market profile. That is volume profile. It's been around since 1994. So that's a nice little trade, but we use market profile because we got such other great tools beside us. We use it as really a confluence tool, not as a necessarily entry tool by itself. Because if you notice right here at the 740 level, we also caught the rolling position counter trend traders off our trend chart. Our trend chart, we've been in a downtrend since about 2.30 to 2, or 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. So going into the trading session, I call it a trading session after midnight. We've had several entries as far as the trend filter goes. Remember, I have three moving averages on the trend filter. We don't use moving averages for crossover systems or support and resistance, but we do use them for trend direction. And I have a, a larger MA, intermediate, and a smaller MA. If they're all three below each other, intermediate below the, the large, small below the intermediate, you are in a trend market. So you are not to take any longs at all, any buys at all. You're only to look for short retracements. So this trend filter, along with market profile, what it does, it keeps your, your mind right, and it keeps you in the direction of the overall trend. So that's why I have these two charts beside each other. I got market profile for dynamic support and resistance as the market moves. And then I got the trend filter to make sure we don't counter trend trade the markets. Now the next step that we have is we have an algorithm that actually is looking for these trend filter trades. If I'm looking at this trend filter right now by itself, I can pinpoint the trades by seeing when an opposite color candle comes in against the trend. Because what I've done for this Rinko bar, it's not a standard Rinko bar, it just doesn't turn red and green based upon the open high and close and close. It's based upon a trend of the market. So the beautiful thing about it is, is if it is, if you get a opposite color candle that's against trend being green since we're in a downtrend, a green candle, then you know you, you're getting counter trend traders that are coming in the market and you want to look to sell the retracement. And that's what we're going to try to do. These are all high probability entry points on crude oil today. You've had one, two, three, four, actually five here with the indecision bar. Those are your only five spots in the market that you should be looking to short crude oil since midnight. So for the past eight and a half hours, those are the only spots that you should be trading the markets. Now, what I've done is, is I'm going to should be showing an algorithm that picks these up. In other words, it will form uh, when you get the counter trend traders coming to the market, it will, it's going to show you these entries like this possible high probability entries. And what it's going to do, is an arrow will automatically pop up with the entry level on a limit order. The limit orders are going to come at the close of the, of the um, previous bar. So whatever the close of the previous bar is, plus or minus one tick, it's going to put it limit order in. And if it fills, then you're going to see this pop up. So what you'll see is you will see, you can see that we have a runner running in the position right now. You'll see the last short was too short at 57.42 limit, one tick below the close of that qualified bar. Okay, so actually took the runner out here. Um, I'm sorry, one position off and took the runner out. So what you can do is you can use this 
as a tool to gauge whether you should be buying or selling the markets based upon the trend filter. This algo will catch most of the trend trades. If you notice, if I put it next to my trend filter, and if I look at it at the 813 level, it caught this high here off the trend filter. Doesn't miss many of them. If you noticed on the previous one here, it's 750. I'm sorry, right here, it caught this one off the trend filter. And you notice right here at my 650 level, it caught the high up here also. So it's the last three, the algos caught every single entry off the trend filter. So I'm going to have a conference call coming up in the middle of June on this because I'm working on the trail right now. Like if I extend this trail out to 24 ticks, right now I got a 10 tick first target, 100 tick second target, and then I got a 24 tick trail right now. I actually, I got a 13 tick trail today because I want to show you entries. But I can put a 24 tick trail on this, I mean a 34 tick trail, and it will hold this one position all the way down on trend markets. And I'll show you how to do that in the conference call coming up. But this is a primary basis for us doing trade entries off of this trend chart. This trend chart is what you need to be seeing what a possible entry may pop up as. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be showing it on this Fibonacci chart because this Rinko bar, these two Rinko bars, these Fibonacci arrows, one is for retracement trading. So in other words, if I get an opposite color bar that comes on my trend filter against trend, trends down obviously, it's all red candles, and I have to get an opposite color green, a red bar, that, a green bar that comes in, I want to look at this chart right next to me. That's called my retracement chart, this chart right here. The retracement chart, what I want to try to do is come within a couple ticks of these symmetry dots, only after the trend filter pops up an opposite color bar. So now it just popped an opposite color bar right here, also on crude. So I'll want the market to stop right here with a negative market delta and a Fibonacci arrow at 97.30. But if you get a whole body candle close above, your trade goes down. Your probability of your trade goes down significantly. So on these retracements, I, I like to use this chart because I like to see the market come up and test these sim dots only after the trend chart has set it up by doing an opposite color candle. Then I got a point of reference by looking at these sim dots. Then I look for a negative market delta. You can see we're all positive market delta down here. There's more, um, more demand than supply in the market right now between the bid and the ask. So what I want to see, I want to see a negative market delta, and I would like to see an indecision bar right here print it's a vertical candle or over here in the three sim to get us rolling over again right now as we speak. Now what if, for example right here, what if you never get an opposite color candle and it's all red bars on the trend filter like this or like this? What if it's just all red? How can I get in the market? Well, then that's called, this chart is called, if it's an opposite color candle comes in, this is a retracement chart. That's what we're looking for right now. We're looking for a retracement trade. That's a retracement trade. We use that chart with market delta because we're looking for the SIM dots to find support or resistance only after my trend filter sets it up. Let's spell retracement right here. All right, so that's a retracement trade. Now, what if it's all red? The trend filter is all red. Then, if it's all red, what we need to do is we need to look over here at the momentum chart. Because with the momentum chart, these Fibonacci arrows will come up. At 810 this morning, at 810, it was all red candles. These are red candles, red candles too. Or over here at 5 o'clock to 5 or 6 o'clock. What you want to see then is you want to see this chart to the far right fire. I want to see an indecision bar, vertical candle with the Fibonacci arrow that prints live. This, these do not repaint. I made sure they don't repaint. If you put this on your own computer, you will see all winners and losers on these Fibonacci arrows. So then you can get used to matching it up with the trend chart so you understand how the relationship works.
but I use this chart as a momentum chart because momentum chart momentum is shallow retracements. So you can use these entries based upon if it's all red candle and all green candle. So I got a momentum chart and a retracement chart. That's the only two trade setups that you're going to look for. Okay. So right now we have not closed above the sim dot still. It's still a valid short. Even though it's above it, it can straddle it. It just hasn't closed above it. We're trying to get another rollover as we speak right now in crude oil. Now, like I said, how we can use market profile, we can use market profile for confluence. Is the market still in a downtrend? Yes. When will it stop its downtrend? When can we lay off the shorts? When is a good time to lay off the shorts? A good time to lay off the shorts, what we're going to do is we're going to lay off the shorts when we get back inside of these two profiles. The thin green line is the most important that's developing. Once it gets back inside of that, you're probably going to have, all right, so you'd have to really get back inside here, though, before you think any longs. I'd have to cut through the developing profile and the thick green lines, the, the volume. I'd have to retest mainly the thin green line that is developing profile and then it should take out the highs. So that will be in play. Let's say if we close above, right now we still do not have a play in the market yet. So if we get a close above the developing at some point and a retest, then you're going to look to take the highs out in the market. All right.